How cool would that be, huh? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another video and hope you're all well as always and I am excited for today's video because I finally get to work on the VL that I haven't touched in like nearly a year. And the last time I touched this car was when I took the cover off it to show you guys in, I made a video a while back, uh, it was called My Dream Car Collection, which I just showed all my cars that I currently own and I took the cover off it and sort of walked around and then I put the cover back on it and I haven't touched it since. So I'll show you her in a minute. Um, I've had this car for probably over two years now. My original plans was to do a five litre sort of a Group A style build. Um, I wanted to do like a, a street registered Group A car but then um, I have a spare LS engine here so you all know by the thumbnail what I want to do now and yeah I'm excited. Um, more LS things. Um, I never really been to Alice's but now that I have one I can sort of muck around with them and, and learn so so before I get into the video guys I just want to let you know that um, my town uh, Melbourne um, which is obviously in Australia for you guys that are watching overseas um, we're in stage four lockdown for COVID-19 so that means that pretty much I go to work and back and can't leave the house we're not allowed to really leave the house between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Um, I work in those hours so I get an exemption but we're not really allowed to go anywhere. Can't even go shopping for auto parts. You got to sort of order them online or do like a click and collect. So it's hard to buy parts. So it's going to be no driving content, no four wheel drive sort of bashes for the next six weeks, which sucks. But you know, it is what it is, and we're going to get through this all together. So that's the main thing. I really want to just get through this and um, come back better than ever. That's probably the main thing. No use being sad about it because this gives us a lot of time to muck around with different projects. And um, a lot of you are probably asking like, why don't I do one thing at a time? Uh, I get that a lot. Um, trust me guys, I find it more satisfying working on cars to have sort of a different um, build. I don't know how to explain it, like a different build every time. You come with a fresh mind to another build and then once you sort of get sick of that, you move on to another one and you sort of circulate, but you still get stuff done. I've, I, I, I was I was doing this and the 31 at the same time and like, you know, they both got finished. I just um, sort of just mucked around between the two. Even um, the VR, when I did the whole rear end, I was still in the middle of building this too. And yeah, sort of, you know, you just, bounce between two. For all of you guys that are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching as always and and to the usual viewers, hello again, it is me. For all you guys that are here for the four wheel drive build, the LS build, don't worry, things are underway. I've sent the bell housing off, so gearbox is over here. I've sent the bell housing off, my uh, good friend Declan came and picked it up and he's going to send it off to a, a good mate of his that does alloy welding, so we're going to get that done. So, so enough crapping on, I'll show you the vehicle now and here she is. This is my 1986 uh, VL. SL Commodore that me and my girlfriend actually brought as a joint project to do together um, So she's been helping me a lot with the car. Um, it pretty much is completely original I have all the paperwork and books for it from when it was new That's pretty handy to have from, a, from buying a car like these things are going up in value uh, Another thing is uh, I didn't really pay for this car I swapped the Nissan stage I had it was a pretty cool deal So it looks pretty barn find style at the moment because it's been sitting under a car cover for nearly two years but i have done a lot of work to it um before i even thought about starting this channel so i'll show you that just in a tick so if we head to the back of the car you can see the spot it's been in for the last what like year and if we go underneath the car i've got my phone light on so you can sort of see but i've restored sort of the under body section from the rear axle back so it's got a brand new diff it's got um, new brakes all that stuff at the back and then it's all been rebody rebody detonated underneath you can sort of see it's been tied up under here, so looking really nice under there, so it's almost brand new. This car does not have much rust at all um, for a VL. Um, usually they rust up in here. Very common for them to rust down here. Now, no rust down there, just some dirt. So if I move my finger, that's all dirt. No rust at all. Coming to the rear window, they usually rot around the back here. I get my phone light. You can see for an original car, pretty cool. Hasn't rust, rusted around the window. I have pulled the, the window seal back and had a look and there's no rust. The only rust it has is in the boot and I'll show you that soon. So my main reason I wanted to film this video is I kind of wanted to sit the Alice in the engine bay. I haven't got the actual conversion mounts for it, but I want to sit it in there and just sort of get an idea of how it's going to look and, and, and where it's going to sort of sit with the, um, the heads and everything and how much different to the RB30. This is a factory RB30 car. So I just want to see how it sort of fits around in there. Uh, I might take the engine mounts out or I might just sit them on there, I'll see because it still has the engine mounts from the SS on the LS. For you guys that are normal viewers to the channel, this was the LS that was supposed to go into my white four wheel drive. So this was the original one I brought for the conversion. But now that we have this one, uh, we now have two LSs and I'm not gonna get rid of one because this is actually a really good engine. So this one I'm probably gonna pull apart and build and we're gonna put in the VL. Now you can buy an adapter kit. Um, it's called, I think Castle Main Rod Shop. They do patrol kits as well, but they also do VL bolt-in um, conversion kit to fit the RB30 K-frame. And I don't know what box I'm gonna run. 
but I want to make it five speed manual. I don't want to go, I sort of want to keep it sort of a group A style car. I don't want to go automatic. Automatic will be cool. Now I say group A, um, what I want to, I really wanted to go single turbo um, LS, um, but I sort of think that'll get away from the group A style. So I'm thinking just like heads cam and just like a nice Revy um, LS, just make it come on song high up in the RPM. That'll be pretty cool. But the um, injected five liters had a sick looking intake, but even just an OTR and that would look pretty cool. I just want that nice um, intake induction sound that the LSs have. Uh, also with the RX-7, um, I have to wait a bit because I need to take it to a shop to get the front end straightened out. So that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So hopefully once this crap's over, I can take it straight there. We can put the engine in and start getting that ready to run. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Let's take this, uh, or well, not this engine, let's take that bonnet off. And um, I'm gonna start mucking around in there and clearing some stuff out and sit the engine in. So I've got the engine crane behind me. Um, and then we'll hoist the engine up and then sit it in. And then hopefully we can sit it in there in some way that it doesn't fall over. Uh, even if I just put a block of wood up behind the firewall and see how it sort of sits in there. So yeah, let's get into it. Now it's got that typical beige VL interior. I've took it apart when I pulled the gearbox out. So that's um, the shifter sitting there in the console. It's got a high rise console, which is in the back. It's got a Calais cluster. It's got the rev tackle and everything on it. You're probably wondering, oh, it's got Cali badges on it. I don't know why the old owner did that. It's got Cali badge there and a Cali badge there. Apparently these have been on for a very long time. The interior itself is really, really good condition, apart from the shit I've left laying in there. Um, it's got a dash mat on it. Um, yeah, um, it's actually in really good nick. I'm pretty happy with the inside of this car. It's sort of what sold me on it too. Yeah, like I said, it was a running and driving car and then I drove it around, had a bottom end knock with the RB30. So I pulled that out and flogged that off. So now something better is going in it. Oh, hello, 32. You can sort of see, guys, I'm bloody using the most amount of room as I can. Um, so the VL's sort of in a weird area in my front lawn, so I sort of got to push it under the, under the driveway, but, you know, got to work with what you got. It'd be awesome to have a shop, but... Now, one thing I wanted to do is, um, I've got the keys. I haven't actually opened the boot for, like, oh, God, it's probably been a few years, so I want to see what's in the boot. It's been a very long time. I think I'm going to give this car a wash as well, guys. I don't even know what key's what. There we go. No spideys. Got a radiator. Jesus Christ, a lot of stuff in here. Should probably put gloves on, eh? So the radiator, got heaps of crap in here. You guys are probably gonna like this, Calais Turbo Stocky. Wouldn't mind getting a set of these, but this one, um, missing a center cap, unfortunately. It might be in there somewhere, I haven't really looked. So we've got the cross member in here, we've got freaking Dizzy Galore. Um, got the stock crossover pipe for the intake. Just crap in here, got fan shroud. I don't even know what half this shit is, so. Uh, I'll show you the rust, actually. So. That's the rust there, the boot seal. That's the rust in the entire car. I'm going to cut another section out of another VL. I'll probably buy these rust cuts, and then I'm going to just weld another section on. So it starts from about there, and ends right there. But this section right here is the worst of it. Compared to the XR Falcon, this has fuck all rust. Absolutely fuck all. Oh, it's cool to see our boot open. It's been a while. All right, I'm going to get my missus to come and help me take the bonnet off because I'm a little girl, and... Um, We'll cut back to it when it's off so we can start getting this engine ready to hoist in. All right, so bonnet's off, fantastic. Um, next thing I did was just hook the chain around the, um, what you call the engine hooks, the hoist hooks here. So I've got the chain here. That's the same chain I pulled the RD out with. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually whack these engine mounts off. So I think that's an 18 mil, I'm not sure. Might be 19, 18, GM sizes. Give it a kick. <laughs> going to rotate the whole man, isn't it? Probably should have put some WD-40 on there. One out. Let's see how the condition these are like. Shit. <coughs> Give it a kick. That did it. Now, I want to take the RB30 mounts off, but I know that um, they're pretty fucking seized in there. Oh, these ones are fucking, these ones, yeah, that, that one's fucked, isn't it? Yeah, these ones have got fucking, they're liquid charge, so when they break, they leak. You can go over here with your buddy and talk about how fucked you both are. Cooly ooly ooly. Um, so what I'm talking about is the engine mounts in here are a bit cooked, so these mounts, they're a bit of a pain. I think the Holden's, uh, I think GM last minute just went, oh, you know, we'll whack this engine in there and just smash the engine mounts and weld them in there and just yeet them in there and... The bolt's like in there and it's a pain in the bottom to get to, so. <sighs> I think we're just gonna get this bolt out here. My first time taking these ones out, so we'll find out. All right, we've got one out there. Nice and easy, just put the gun on this side, 17 mil. 
Put the spanner on there. I don't know how hard this is going to be to film. I hold the spanner with my, my finger there, and then we'll just. Out. Try and hold the spanner, the camera, and the gun at the same time. Oh, there we go. Nuts off. Ugh. This car, one thing, come from the countryside, so it has a lot of mud and dirt under it and it come from like a look, looks like a really dry area so pretty sure it came from the bush anyway now the mounts are off the ls1 and the mounts are off the k-frame for the rb30 um, let's see how badly an ls sits on the rb30 k-frame with no mounts it's either going to sit in there really low or really high and i'm thinking it's probably going to be a low maybe over the back there i took the charcoal canister thing out that sits in there just so it has all the room here this is the air horn module for the air horns a little thing so I don't know if that's going to get in the way. If it does, it is going. Air horns do sound hilarious in this. So, all right, I'm going to set up the engine crane, put the engine on the crane, and we'll slowly set it down into the vehicle and see how we go. Cool, got the crane all set up on the engine. So what I'm going to do is just buzz the engine stand off with the rattle gun. Uh, 16 mil bolts, I think they are, or 17. Uh, sorry, four 17 mil bolts. And then um, engine should be free. And then we can hoist it into the V hull. Okay, guys, so now it's time. I guess that's a level of excitement putting an engine in a car you guys probably do too if you love doing this kind of thing so um yeah so i got the engine on the crane here just ready to go um i did have camera because it's a bitch to film but i have a wheelie bin now my trusty wheelie bin so i can put it on there and sort of film the process of the motor going in yeah um, i'm moving a couple more things out the way so we've got as much room as possible um we might be sitting on the sump if that's the case oops but this sump is broken i will show you um, we are leaking some fluids, so I gotta get a freaking rag for that. It's gonna leak all different types of shit. Being on awkward angles, so it's been sitting on one spot for so long. All right, I'll set you guys up and uh, we'll sit this motor in the car. Hopefully sit it in the car easily with no blocks of wood, but I reckon we're gonna need blocks of wood, so let's do it. guys so getting in there very slowly i'm probably going to pull the engine a bit further forward and try and sit the uh, engine mount brackets on the engine mount bracket on the frame and hopefully we get it to sit nicely it's actually sitting in it's actually fitting in there really well but you gotta remember these cars did come factory with a v8 so you guys should be privileged as well your uh camera stand well my camera stand is a a turbo so pretty cool All right, guys, hit a little bit of a roadblock here. So our power steering pump at the bottom is just too wide and the alternator is hitting on this side as well. So what I'm going to do is jack the motor back up out of the car and we'll take the power steering... Oh, sorry, not the power steering. We'll take the air pump... Air pump. Air conditioner pump off the engine. English mark. So we'll just go whack the serpentine belt off, which is just from the tension here. Just back it that way. And then uh, we'll whack the pump off. Just a couple of bolts. All right, so air pump pulley... Oh, air pump pump and pulley off. So we just whack the um, serpentine off. Um, there was a secondary belt for the aircon drive um, and then that was the main serpentine that runs everything else so with that off we have so much more room on the left hand side so hopefully we can sit the engine down nicely fingers crossed awesome it's sitting in there so that's completely sitting on the old engine mounts in there it actually sits in there fucking really well <laughs> it's like it was built for this eh this, and this did come with a a factory v8 engine we're sort of sitting in the middle ish um, i'm gonna probably go back a bit more because you can see that engine mounts sort of just sit a little bit off there so i might slide it scooch it back a bit more but there's an ls in the v oh how cool is that that's awesome how cool would that be huh <laughs> but we're not gonna put a chingling turbo in it oh guys i'm so excited i just can't get over how well it fits in there it's amazing so much room around there as well so we can sort of work out exhaust sizing in that depending if i go turbo or not but um, we can work out what extractors and have to put. Um, I'm sure there's um, certain type of extractors for these. Heaps of room up here in the front. I don't know how the engine's going to sit with the actual conversion mounts in there. It might sit more forward. 
um, then we can have more room to work in the fucking bow housing behind it and stuff. But this thing always needed a V8. Ever since I got it, I wanted to do a V8 build. If you want an RB30 turbo build, guys, I know a lot of people want to see this RB30 turbo, but I'm going to be doing a budget um, RB30 turbo build series on my 31 because I have most of the stuff for it. So now that it's uh, quarantine, or quarantine, isolation time for six weeks, I can't do anything for six weeks. So I'll try and um, do a bit to that and maybe turbo convert it before the end of the year. That's plan of mine so but yeah how cool is that I'm, I'm stoked i'm so excited guys like i keep saying it but i'm just stoked that looks so cool and once it's in there you sort of get the idea of the build coming together obviously i'm going to pull it back out again and um, probably do some head work and cam and everything to it it should be really fun really fun build guys um it's actually fun to work on this thing again i haven't touched it in you know over two years or nearly two years so she needs a wash as well she's absolutely filthy Also, this was the like Chinese turbo I bought for the 31 a long time ago. This is the 3076 no brand turbo. So I was just gonna see how that runs. My mate's dad has a 31 track car that has ran a Chinese turbo for like three years. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And then if it blows up, I'll just put another turbo. I got a few um, T28s here, so whack one of those in. But if I was to turbo this, I'd put a big, big fucker in here. So put a precision or something in there. Just what a lot of the VL guys run. And then obviously put a Haltech. I've got the complete engine harness for this as well, but it'd probably be easier just to go Haltech plug and play. Okay guys, so I thought that would be just a cool little video um, to start off the, well, I think we're nearly five weeks in now of the isolation. It's almost been a week already. Um, so hopefully this can be sort of a starter to another project that we can start off through and during the holidays. Holidays, isolation, not holidays. Um, so for you guys that are here for the RX-7 FD build, um, don't worry, I've got a lot of things coming. I've got packages arriving from this. So um, a lot of things coming for this. So hopefully we can smash out more work on this over the period that we're in lockdown. I've also got a few goodies I ordered for this as well. I've got some brakes coming, uh, some stuff from GK Tech. So we can put some stuff on this. I want to do the screamer pipe setup and fix all that up. It's got a screamer pipe, but I want to redo all the um, external gate setup. Obviously we uh, have our LS Patrol, which I know a lot of you are here for, so ouch. Where once um, the bow housing comes back, we're gonna put all the clutch assembly back together, um, adjust all the clutch adjustments and whack it back in. So um, here's a gearbox here. I'm gonna take the transfer case off, just to make it a little bit easier. And then we can put the gearbox in, transfer case in later, just make it a little bit easier on ourselves and my back, because my back is absolutely fucked from last time. I haven't touched a car in a week because of how bad my back was, so. I'm taking it easy, but today we really went really well. It's getting dark now, guys, and my GoPro films like absolute shit at night. So I'm gonna try and wrap it up. Um, we'll probably do another episode very soon. I wanna actually get into it and start cleaning it up and um, get, get the underneath ready for some more undercoat and uh, rip the front subframe out and restore that, seeing as that I've done the back. Also, I wouldn't mind starting to sand the body I'm um, getting the body all in primer, just like I'm starting to do with the RX-7, just do it in little bits and pieces. Take our time with it and try and get it as straight as possible. Needs new headlights and stuff, so I'll order that. Um, it's actually got Calais taillights. You probably, eagle eye viewers probably realized, right at the, when I open the boot, um, it's got Calais taillights. They're cracked anyway. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna need new ones. I don't know if they're original. I think they are, but I'm probably gonna need new ones. That sucks. But look how dirty she is. She needs a body clean. Being under a cover for years and years, we'll do that to a car. Okay guys, I'm gonna stop baffling on and um, finish the video up. Uh, fun build guys, I hope you enjoy this series. Um, any series that I do, I hope you like it. I hope it's not too much of a cluster fuck for you. Don't worry, I'm gonna you know pick at everything, but the main uh, concern right now is the patrol. So I wanna get that thing on the road before the isolation is over. That way, as soon as it's over, we can smash the hills and the bush with it. And maybe do some cool tip-ins in some uh, industrial areas. I mean, private areas. So if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing and thank to everyone that subscribed in the past. We're nearly at 4,000. Um, as, as always, I say that absolutely baffles me. Thank you so much, guys. It means the world. Um, I reply to every single comment because um, if you guys take your time out to comment to me, I'll reply back because you're taking your time out to watch the videos and comment on them and I'll take my time out of my day to reply to you. I'm not one of those guys that just reads them and that's it, you know. Um, yeah, I really appreciate anyone that comments, good or bad. Um, constructive criticism is always welcome. And yeah. We'll see you in the next video, guys. So you take care and stay safe in isolation for your Melburnians. See you later.